We've got a very interesting guest for you guys right now. It's Walter Masterson. Uh, he attends uh, Trump rallies uh, and interesting things happen uh, when reporters talk to him or he gets taped. Let's take an example of one here. We want to stop the recount, but we also want to recount. Okay, at the same time you want a recount and to stop the recount. Because yeah, I mean, you know, some states, you know, we're ahead. So we know it's like, all right, stop counting while we're ahead. And then other states, you know, we want to, um, we're behind, so, you know, we, that it obviously needs a recount. You're not okay. all the so, votes. so, wherever you are behind, you need a recount over there, and, like, wherever you lead, like, you need to, to keep counting the votes. Isn't it sort of, like, biased? <laughs> no. What? I mean, no, the liberal media is biased. Yes. We're, is biased. we just want um, our president, um, America... Uh, Democrats did bad things, 1800s, racists, walk away. George Soros, Hillary Clinton, um, Nancy Pelosi, and, um, you know, trust the plan. Do your own research, you know what I mean? Thank you very much. Thank but you. We're not stupid. Yeah, we're not. Donald Trump is a genius. That's what the J stands for. Now, Walter, uh, you're here on uh, TYT Network. Uh, tell us, does the J actually stand for genius? Um, well, I mean, you tell me. I mean, you know, is Donald Trump not the smartest man you've ever met? I mean, he he beat COVID in what, like three, four hours? Come on now. I, I thought maybe it took three or four days, but I, I'm getting the updated. It, it turns out it was three to four hours. That's that's why everybody's yeah, still alive. Like it's, I mean, it was just, you know, just he took like a nap and stuff. It's fine, right? Yeah, no, it's fair, that's fair. And I like that you're challenging us, the liberal media, uh, to get it right. All right, no, if, if you couldn't tell by now, and in the beginning, I couldn't tell, because that, that bit you did, Walter, was so good. Uh, I, I couldn't tell if you really were MAGA or pretending to be MAGA. But uh, but you know how I found out, Walter? Because when I posted on, on Twitter, everybody's like, is that Walter Masterson? Because that looks like a Masterson project. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how long, how long have you been going to these events uh, and basically trolling the trollers? So I, yeah, yeah. So few few months, I went to. So I started playing around with people in New York City. That was fun. I thought, okay, what if I went up to people and just agreed with them? like just over agreed with them and was just sort of hyperbolic about it. And so I tried that and it was, it didn't, it sort of doesn't work. And then what I actually found out to my surprise is that when you are dressed like a Trump supporter, that's it. Then people engage with you, Trump supporters engage with you. Um, the, the rhetoric doesn't, doesn't matter until you are dressed like a Trump supporter. Oh, that's so interesting. I'm so glad we have you on. I had never heard that before. So here, I'm gonna show you a clip that Walter had with someone in New York. Uh, I assume it's one of the earlier clips because you're not dressed as a Trump supporter and the guy wigs out a little bit. But I wanna give have you give context to it. The guy has a sign, it's uh, not necessarily easy to read oh. in the beginning. What did the sign say about an Oreo cookie and explain what that is? Okay, so this is like some old man racism. That like I've had to explain this to people. So Oreo cookie means someone that's uh, white on the inside and black on the outside. So he, he was saying black lives only matter when it's a when it's a um, like an Oreo, like a someone who's white on the inside and black on the outside, and they shoot a black person. But he he made a sign, then thought, and you know this would be great he, to go in front of Trump Tower and say this. Yeah, and you know. Advocate this. So Oreo cookie is an offensive term, right? <laughs> to say the least. And uh, yeah, I, it's it's like an old it's it's like an old offensive term. So yeah. like black people know what that means. Um, older black people know what that means. Yeah, appara and, and, apparently. Yeah, so. and there's like a whole like wiktionary of old racist terms. Uh, like yeah. uh, banana, it means Asian person who's white on the inside. Uh, my folks used yeah, to be Twinkie, yeah, yeah. And then there's old words like Mohammedan for uh, a Muslim American. <laughs> okay, I mean, anyways. <laughs> so um, you go and agree with him. You're not in your getup, so he gets freaked out. But all you're doing is kind of amplifying what he's saying. So let's have fun. Let's watch it first, and then come back. Yeah. Look at this. Don't touch the sign. I will not touch the sign. Touch the sign. Because Black the sign. Lives Matter 
wants to get rid of Oreo cookies. Well, those are black police. No, they, the Oreo cookies, Nabisco, Chips Ahoy, all of it. They want no more Hebler elves. There are people with white suits and butterfly nuts waiting for you at the corner over there. They're going to take you straight to Bellevue. There'll be somebody there to give you medicine that you really need. Go, get into the get into the end. Hillary Clinton is working to try and take away your Oreo cookies. Wake up, America! Okay, so and he's got like guns on his jacket and stuff, and and he never yeah. understood that you were trolling him, of course. Uh, but what was interesting there, Walter, is that he thought you were crazy, even though you were amplifying what was actually on his side. Yeah, I just I saw that once I saw him, I was like, oh, I gotta mess with this guy, and then I saw the Oreo part, and I was like, oh, okay, that's that's where I'm going with this. This is this is too good. I was there for a completely different reason. I I raised money um, for Black Lives Matter, so like I made a thing where like you can buy a video for twenty dollars. I'll make a video, custom video, saying whatever you want in front of Trump Tower, and the money goes to Black Lives Matter organizations. So that's yeah. awesome. And that, awesome. so I was just there doing that, and then I was like, oh hi, well since you're already here, let's do this. Yeah. And then, but what the funny thing is, is there's nothing. It's what I had learned later on that. It's it's the weirdest thing. Unless you're dressed like a Trump supporter, they don't they they don't trust you. They don't this. It's it has to be. It's visual. It's I mean for you know for the left, it's there's a lot of rhetoric. That's there's just a lot of rhetoric that you need to hear on the left. But for the right, it's very visual. It has to be right there before someone will you know just engage with you, trust you. Because I mean, I've tried this and failed that countless times to, to engage someone. No one wants to engage with me if I'm not in in the proper attire. Yeah, in my experience. You no, know, you know, I I I instantly understood it as soon, as soon as you said. I'd never heard it before, but the reason for it is because of identity. Um, they say, okay, then he is part of our identity. He's okay. Then he can say any insane thing he wants. We all say insane things. But if you're not part of our group and you're not part of our identity, then you're the others. And the conservative brain is repelled by the others. But if you're inside the wagons, then have at it, Hoss. Then we're 100% on your yeah. side. And, and so that's what the, yeah, so that's I mean, what the uniform the represents. So it's instead of having a McDonald's or a UPS uniform, you put on the MAGA uniform, then you can say all the crazy stuff you want. Um, and so that, yeah. that's why I think your comedy is brilliant, but it, it, and, and partly because it's funny, but also because it exposes something interesting. Speaking of which, in the time that we have left, you went and interviewed uh, some Proud Boys guys. What was the context for that, and what did you learn from that? I, I still actually keep in touch with some of them. They don't know that I was just there trolling and stuff like that. So, and I, you know, I wanted to honestly learn more. They talk about how they're, you know, on the Q platform and. So yeah, I said, all right, like let's. I wanted to learn more about this. So, and yeah, the a lot of what they said, you know, was just regurgitated anti-Semitism, and people, you know, people say that Proud Boys are racist. They're not racist in the way that you normally would think that they're racist. I mean, because you have people, Proud Boys, there that are, you know, Latino. You have, you know, of all types. And so it's a it's a very weird type of just you know discriminatory group. It's not what you normally think it is. So it's it's a bit tough to wrap your head around when you're when you're speaking to some of them. I agree with you because those are facts. A lot of their membership is Latino, and some of their leadership is Latino. Um, not not over fifty percent or anything, but a surprising amount. I, I will say this. So what's what's really important. And what was very disturbing about going to all these rallies, we're gonna have as a nation a very serious discussion about this in a few years. But I'm saying it right now is that QAnon is radicalizing BIPOC, black indigenous people of color. Mm -hmm. It is radicalizing them. Mm -hmm. That's what I've seen at the rallies. I, I'm, I'm, I've seen all types of people at Trump rallies, I'm not shocked anymore. Like there's, I don't assume just because someone is a certain race, color, creed, 
uh, orientation that the, you know they're an ally is so nothing shocks me. And I've had a lot of conversations. It all comes back to Q. That was the gateway drug. I think that they take advantage of people's pain. Once they see a pain point, and in in the case of Q, it's child molestation. They just dive into it, right? And they press that open wound and then people go, "Oh, they must be on my side because they realize my pain, right? And then the two groups that they're most against are actually not black folks or Latinos or any of that. It's women, the misogyny, I think unifies a lot of the proud boys and and Muslims. Everybody agrees, Oh, we hate the Muslims. And if you go deep enough to think the group that that actually runs everything in in the all these conspiracies are the Jews. So they can't say that one out loud as much, right? But you like Muslims and is a is a gateway, then you get to misogyny, then you get to the Jews. So what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, no, um, they (laughs) so I, I, you know, people, some of these people had signed waivers. So I, you know, they said, "Oh, can you please turn the camera off?" And I didn't turn the camera off, but I didn't publish that because they did sign a waiver. But you know, plenty of them have explained to me how the Holocaust never happened. Uh, they send me stuff, QAnon's rhetoric, um, you know, about that. You know, the Jews are behind all of the, you know, the child stuff, and you know, they say, "Well, it's written in their Talmud," you know, and they quote the Talmud to me. Um, so you know it's it's rebranded anti-Semitism. It's I, I thought I was going to get something new, and I was like, this is like 1700s, 1800s anti anti-Semitism, just rebranded to modern day. Mm. And I mean, yes, obviously, you know, there's it it's sort of this mutated form of Christianity because they all are, they you know they they'll all say, well, you know, the blood of you know I'm bathed in the blood of Christ and God wins in the end. They'll say stuff like that. Yeah. Um, no. So it's it's, no. it's really weird, and and yeah. it's 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 also like it, it's tragic because you know I, I think of people like Bernie Sanders. You know they want, you know they want, um, they sort of want the same things. You know this is you know people on the left want the uh, the financial elites to you know be brought down and for there to be equality. It, it, this is like a mutated form. But they're letting the elites off the hook by blaming it on, you know, Jews, Muslims, uh, transgender. Yeah. Oh, transgender. That's another gateway drug of hate. Right. Uh, you start there, and they're like, "Oh, come further, come further." Uh, and at the end, the big surprise is it's the Jews. Um, so, yeah. and, and Walter, by the way, I interviewed David Duke five years ago. I was just like you were, like shocked. Oh, it turns out that that the the very core of it is anti-Semitism. Same exact thing with Duke. I thought he was gonna rail against black people and immigrants and stuff. And he's like, nope, nope, Jews, 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 Jews. So, and that guy who just- well, I mean, well, it's nothing new. The, the KKK was founded upon hatred for the Jews. And it was media control, it was, so it was, you know, it's it's just rebranded to modern day. And, you know, I'm, I've started to call people out. Like, all right, when you're saying Soros, it's just a dog whistle for anti-Semitism. Like I'm not. It's not. I know. I know exactly what you mean by right now. Like, and I'm not going to pretend that. Let's not pretend that we don't know what you mean. Yeah, you know, hundred percent. Hundred percent. George Soros. Yeah. No. No. They're obsessed you know? with Soros because of the anti-Semitism. Billion percent. Yeah. And and so like if they want to get donor money out, progressives want to get donor money out. Are you crazy? We'd be happy to do that, yeah. right? But we're not going to yeah. co-sign on to the insane anti-Semitism that has plagued this earth for all this time. There, so it, it's so sad how they're dragging people down into this muck of hatred, and and, and every part of it. Like, look, last thing, uh, the the evangelical pastor that just got in trouble for saying, let's start executing. Uh, scientists and professors and Democrats. <laughs> He's the same guy that during impeachment called it a Jew coup. Okay, so this thing has been underneath the surface boiling, and no one even like no one in power realized it. And and it, and we think that oh, if Trump lost, it's over. Nah, it ain't over at all. So I'm really worried about what's going to happen in the future. And Walter, I, mean, I was at the MAGA rally in D.C. That was, I mean, the stuff that came out of everyone's mouth there was just the weirdest thing ever. That was the most. That was the crazy. The, the most crazy people came to that rally, and I've been to Trump rallies before. 
And that rally was full of the absolute craziest people. If you went there, you were crazy. <laughs> you know. All right, Walter, uh, where can people find more of your videos? Um, you can follow just every platform I'm on. It's just Walter Masterson. Uh, so YouTube, Walter Masterson. Uh, follow me on Twitter, uh, TikTok primarily, and Instagram. Just you know, Walter Masterson. It's straight through one one word. All right, Walter, amazing work. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Keep going. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers. No problem. On the go? Don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.